a wildlife unit. Um, a lot of people that live in Cape Town and know about us don't know we have a wildlife unit, so we're always kind of reporting and letting people know about our amazing wildlife unit. Um, the wildlife unit is a short-term care facility, so that means we don't keep animals for more than five days. Um, you know, when it comes to wild animals, they can be incredibly stressed out when they're brought into a captive environment like this. So our wildlife inspectors are very mindful that they are, you know, kept in quiet places. People don't come in and out here unless they're allowed to because we don't want the animals being exposed to unnecessary stress. Um, it's important that when we have an animal here, we do try and rehabilitate it and release it as quickly as possible. After five days, you know, we have to make this decision of potentially euthanizing an animal because keeping it longer than five days could be so harmful. And there's a term they call myopathy, which I hope it's myopathy, but it's, oh, there's Minette, she can tell us. We're basically, there's stress from captivity and that can cause this, a wild animal to die. Um, it's just too stressful and we want to avoid that at all costs. Um, we can sometimes apply to our national body, which is the NSPCA in Johannesburg, and we can apply to them for an exemption. So if there's a particular case, for instance, two years ago we had an amazing um, Roy cut, which is like a lynx, a caracal. It had a broken leg. Our vets were convinced that they could fix the, the leg. They put a pin in it. The animal needed about three months to recover. So the NSPCA allowed us an exemption where the animal could stay with us for three months and they didn't believe it would cause unnecessary stress to the animal. And then happily the animal was released after its recovery with us and was back in the wild and they can still track it today because we've got a caracal project um, that's a separate organization in Cape Town. They track all the caracals to make sure that they're healthy and happy. And yeah, that, that was a wonderful success story. Um, but overall, we want to get the animals here, treated, rehabilitated, out within five days. Um, it's best for the animals. Um, again, we recently, thanks to our um, request officer who is called Joette, she works with trusts and legacies and she gets grants from various organizations around the world and locally. So she was very, very um, hard working and found a trust that donated 150,000 rands to us so we could refurb our, um, our wildlife cages. Wildlife, what do you call them in there? Wildlife. Wildlife Avery's, pardon me. <laughs> um, yeah, so they've been refurbished and you know, they've been painted in a natural color so that it feels earthy. Um, it's really quite beautiful. Manette, you're gonna come over here and tell them about the Avery's. Ooh, what's in your hand? It's a birdie. I'm not camera ready. It's fine. You look, uh, you look great. She's preggers as well, okay. carrying a little baby. Is that a bird? Yeah. Aww. Who is it? I came it? in this morning. Oh my God. <laughs> Uh, wow, look at the colors. Cuckoo bird. Oh, shit. Cuckoo, cuckoo. It's a, it's a baby, obviously. Mm. Oh my god. It's amazing. Cuckoo, I didn't know you got cuckoos here. Mm. We got it just around the corner here. Yeah. I learned something like yeah. all the time here. <laughs> oh my god, that's incredible. Cuckoo. Oh, the poor thing. I had no idea you got cuckoos. Okay, I'm taking a video. Look at the beautiful colors. So, yeah, he's going to go to our rehab. Lady who's gonna look after him, but for now I'm feeding him. Aww. You are a smaller an hour. Gorgeous! Oh, those colors! Are his eyes open yet? Where's eyes? Oh my God, mm. He does open them, but oh my he's. Oh god, they're tiny! Oh, there they are. <laughs> oh, bless! <laughs> oh, I didn't know there were cuckoo birds in, uh, in South Africa. So gorgeous. Oh, I must um, actually, this can be a nice Facebook story. And it's happy because he's going to be released. Yeah, oh, beautiful. So, yeah, apparently his parents lay their eggs in someone else's nest and then they That's raise them do. for them. They're yeah. buggers. Yeah, they go and steal yeah. nests. Yeah. <laughs> <gasps> Shame. Anyway, so Minette, tell him like your your job. No, <laughs> it's for you. It's for you YouTube thing. It's not going to be on the national news. No, no, no. Don't you worry. Oh, um, so at the wildlife unit, we uh, don't only care for animals short term, um, but also go out and inspect facilities that keep wild animals and make sure that what they're doing is up to par and. They're not keeping animals unnecessarily, and if they are, then we try and sort that out. 
And also in terms of pet stores, they check on pet stores to make sure that the animals are being properly cared for. Um, you know, if we get reports that there's a circus in town, we've got to make sure that they go out and check yeah. that the animals are of being course. cared for. We're completely yeah. against circuses. Um, yeah, so the wildlife inspectors are definitely not, we don't have enough of them in our unit, but they do incredible work. And they also monitor our beaches. That's an important okay. thing to note. Okay. So they'll be out there working with things like seals. Um, if there's a beached animal, a beached whale or a dolphin. Um, so they monitor, you know, the national parks as well. I think people forget that Cape Town, it's a city, but we're right in the middle of um, Table Mountain National Park. Yep. We're right next to the ocean. So yep. we're also looking after all of those areas. And that's where our wildlife inspectors really do work very hard. Um, you know, animals like baboons, hedgehogs, all those kind of beautiful creatures, they're there to help them should something bad happen. Um, especially now in fire season as well, our inspectors will go out and ensure that animals are cared for domestic too, if fires are in urban areas. Um, but then making sure that, you know, we're there to help animals in the aftermath of fires, maybe animals suffering from burns, even animals like a tortoise getting caught in fires. Our inspectors are there to help and assist and relieve suffering. Um, yeah, so I'll take you around here and you can see Actually, let's go inside and you can take a visual of the, the aviaries because they're really? all new and beautiful. We do have a, a birdie there then. Okay. What is it? Um, it's a... It's a girl. Oh, wow. It's really quite a little bit of a Oh, no. Oh, God, beautiful. What kind of bird is it? Sparrowhawk. Sparrowhawk, okay. Is that the young one? It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. it's, it's amazing. Oh. Indeed. So you see the old and new. Is that the light? Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and you can't see out. Oh, yeah, the, they've done special um, mirrors so that you okay. can't see in and out okay. so they don't get disturbed. It's very good, yes. It's beautiful. The natural color paint, that's my favorite part. <laughs> they used to be white, now they're earthy. It's indeed very beautiful. Yeah. yeah. We just need to put our furniture back. Because oh. it's been a bit busy. Where did they all go zooming off to in their cars? They all looked so... Two or three months ago, um, we got a call about a rock monitor lizard. So picture like a little Komodo dragon. It's like one of those, but not as scary as a Komodo dragon. And basically, someone found it in a truck. Oh. It had jumped onto a truck in KwaZulu Natal, went for a joyride, landed up in Cape Town. The truck driver found it and was like, Oh, what do I do with this? They called us. We realized, or our inspectors realized, that's a rock monitor lizard. You don't get them in Cape Town. So he was here for a little bit. Yeah. Um, they called him Sylvester, like Rocky Balboa from <laughs> the Rocky movies. And then Sylvester got flown back VIP style to Joburg um, through Bidet Cargo. They sponsored his flight <laughs> and he was returned. So yeah, they're fun stories like that yeah, as well, which is really of great. Course. Amazing, um, yeah. But yeah, there could be anything in here. You could yep. have a cat, you could have a baboon, you could have snakes or a little cuckoo baby. So yeah. And every day is not the same here, right? Eh? Not for these guys, so, no. That, that, that's an awesome job what you have. Yeah, there, so. but they work really hard. Yeah, yeah, I know, this, I know this. Thank you. And then we'll just go around here. We always have tortoises. We've got these cool enclosures that were revamped recently. Because um, people are often encountering tortoises crossing roads. Um, so they come here and then when our inspectors are ready, they take the tortoises to certain areas where they can be reintroduced. Okay. Um, and they've got to be very careful where they take the tortoises because you don't want to bring in tortoises from a different gene pool and then mess up the ecosystem in a certain area. So our inspectors will know which tortoises can go where um, so it doesn't disrupt the environment. So yeah, there are a lot of beautiful tortoises chilling out here. So even when the wildlife facility is completely empty, we know we at least have tortoises. This is a land turtle, I, I, I guess. A eh? land turtle, yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, they're actually amazing. I mean, you just watch them. They yeah, all day, all day. Like basically beautiful. living dinosaurs. Yeah. And then at the back here, um, we've also got some bigger aviaries. So if we had a large animal like a, uh, say a hedgehog, a porcupine, um, or a lynx, or a baboon even, they would come and stay here. Um, it's a good thing they're all empty at the moment. And then over here, we have aqua pens. 
So they've obviously just got the top fallen down, but let me see if I can get through the side. Yeah, they've just put this up to obviously provide shade cloth, but okay. basically they're empty at the moment. Otherwise it's, little, it's going to be too warm. It'll be too warm, um, and yes. these little aqua pens are just sunken in little water pools. So if we have a seal or a penguin, we can plump them in there. They were actually kept empty during the drought. Okay. Um, but we did have a seal a year ago who was amazing. He was called Edward Flipperhands. He was a sub-Antarctic fur seal, oh. which is not common. No. Um, we just reckon he got Seals. separated. So from Edward Flipperhands was with us for about, I want to say about five, six months, because he was very young, very grumpy little guy, beautiful. <laughs> But our inspectors knew that he needed to be dropped off very far out in the ocean because he yeah. needed to be far enough away that he wouldn't get mixed up in the wrong family and that he would find other sub-Antarctic fur seals. So he also got flown to PE um, VIP in a box with our inspector and then our inspector went out on a boat with him in PE and they went out very far. It was actually a horrible trip. It was so choppy. And eventually they got him and he jumped off into the ocean and away he went. Yeah, so that was amazing. Yeah. And again, he was a special case who stayed with us much longer than five days. That, that's, that's so gr uh, yeah, that's grateful uh, what you do guys. Yeah. And, and it's also special for the wildlife people that work here because the wildlife inspectors very often come from conservation <coughs> backgrounds. So for them, you know, it's it's the worst thing in the world when they have to put an animal to sleep. Yeah, of um, course. You know, they want to see the happy ending like we all do. And that's so the ultimate goal of of uh, what what, yeah. what you guys do here. And to right? rehab an animal for almost six months mm. and then it successfully rehabilitates is yep. unbelievable. It's so, amazing, yes. Yeah, that was a really wonderful yep. story. Yeah, so it's not a huge facility, but it's perfect for what we need to do. And that's the most important thing, yeah. Yeah, that's every every section. Yeah. Okay. My name is Tara McGovern. I work for the Cape of Good Hope SPCA in Cape Town, South Africa. Thank you so much for coming along on the journey and finding out more about what we do. Um, it's really important for us to make sure that people all around the world know about the amazing work that the SPCAs do. Um, for us, our core mandate is the prevention of cruelty towards all animals. Um, at any one time at our facility in Cape Town, we have about 700 animals on our property. So that's anything from domestic animals, cats, dogs, birds, hamsters, bunnies, to your larger animals like bovines, donkeys, horses. Um, this obviously puts an incredible strain on our resources. The operating costs for our one SPCA in Cape Town um, amount to 36 million rands a year. So it's a lot of money. Um, it covers everything from the staff who work here's salaries, it covers medicine, it covers petrol, electricity, um, food for all the animals. Um, just alone in our adoption center to care for those adoption dogs um, requires six tons of food a month. So for us, being an NGO where we receive no funding from government in South Africa, it's really important that we rely on support from people locally and around the world who believe in the work that we do. Um, for us, we know that every single animal is a sentient being. They feel, they feel pain, they feel love just like we do. And to think of any animal out there suffering and us not being able to get to them in time to prevent that suffering is a really terrifying thought. Um, the more money that we raise means we can hire more inspectors, which means we have more people that can get out there to animals in need that need our help desperately. Um, in South Africa, a huge problem is overbreeding of um, all types of animals. Um, definitely in terms of the work that we do and the things we see every day, dogs are a high priority because dogs are one of those animals that everyone can generally get access to. So if people wish to breed them for purposes like selling puppies, um, it's pretty easy to do it. For us, education is a massive part of the work that we do. We want people to understand that the SPCA are there to support them, to help them, to give them advice, um, to offer veterinary services if they need it. But also it's important for um, the people and the public to know that we also have an education department. And we know that in anything in the world, you can't make a difference if people aren't educated. Um, we go out into communities, we educate people about the right way to treat animals, whether it's caring for farmyard animals through our Compassion in Farming program. Um, which is funded by WTG, a German nonprofit. Um, you know, we have our mobile clinics that guard every day to help people in communities with basic veterinary care. Um, and we also have an amazing education team that go out to schools in various communities teaching children. Because if the children understand it and get it and realize that animals have feelings, 
hopefully in the future we can see um, you know a world where we treat animals kindly where we don't perpetrate cruelty to them um, animals have no voice we are their voice and we're very proud of the work that we do here people work incredibly hard um, our inspectors go out into very dangerous situations and they do it because they believe in the work that they do and they love animals so for us if people do wish to support the work that we do we really, really encourage you to go onto our website, which is www.capespca.co.za. You can find all of the information there. If you are donating from overseas, you can also donate via Give and Gain. You can donate via um, Global Giving, which is another um, platform that allows people to donate to us from the UK and the US. Um, and you can call us on 27217004141 if you want to chat to anyone about how you can donate or just get involved with the work that we do. Um, every cent matters, so even if you can just donate a pound, it means the world to us and will help an animal in need. So yeah, thank you very much.